Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And today is, I've lost track of the days, Movie Club number six. Movie Club number six. Yes. And for Movie Club number six, we are discussing the 1953 classic Roman Mm -hmm. Holiday, starring Audrey Hepburn, kind of, I think, her big explosion and kind of coming out party into being the Audrey Hepburn that we all know now. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, really got her on the map. Uh, Dylan, would you like to tell the people what it's about? Yes. Uh, a bored and sheltered princess escapes her guardians and falls in love with an American newsman in Rome. Yes. I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, mm-hmm. one thing I find fascinating is how many male leads in like older movies, like forties and fifties and even back to the thirties were newspaper men. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a very interesting thing how many movies I go back and watch and it's like, oh, the guy writes for the newspaper because mm-hmm. of course he does. I feel like it's I feel like it's used a lot because you can get in trouble with all sorts of different types of people, so then it gets you in all sorts of sticky situations, right? News yeah. reporters they run afoul of criminals, but also politicians, shady businessmen, all sorts of stuff, and then they can be shady. And they can be shady themselves, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting because now, like, anybody can tweet something. And kind of, yeah. you can add that element to the story for any movie that takes place after, like, 2005. Mm-hmm. Pretty mm-hmm. much, right? But uh, it, it is interesting. I just, I've been watching a lot of movies from the 40s and 50s the last few years. So, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, I've kind of picked up on some of those things. And then I also think mm-hmm. that might be a significant factor in our disagreement on this movie because we're usually Maybe. not too far apart from each other on most mm-hmm. things. But, you know, with uh, Valentine's Day coming up next week, we thought it would be fun to go back and watch kind of one of the classic rom coms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, was, that was the idea. Yeah. And I, I think I'd only ever seen one. I'd seen two Audrey Hepburn movies before this. Had you seen any? Um, yeah, I've seen uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's and Charade. For okay, sure. I've seen Charade and My Fair Lady. Okay, okay. So I, I still have. I still need to get to Breakfast at Tiffany's. Do not uh, highly do not <laughs> recommend. Whatever the opposite of highly recommend is, avoid <laughs> My Fair Lady. I really hate it. <laughs> but uh, back to Roman Holiday. Yeah, and again, if this is your first uh, movie club uh, that you've watched of ours, we do no spoilers for the first part, then we give our star ratings, and then we do have a discussion, including spoilers at the end. So we try to keep it to just kind of broad themes um, yeah. and kind of ideas. And I guess, um, you know, I was really excited to watch this movie. Um, I, uh, I I do like Audrey Hepburn and the other things that I've seen her in, like Gregory Peck. Um, and I had pretty high expectations and I got to say, I was just bored to tears. Wow. Okay. This movie never once like got me. Like I I was bored at the beginning when it was like, like the humor I didn't think was funny, like in her being a princess and then she like escapes. And I I thought that was kind of silly. And then when they meet, I just didn't feel like, like I kept waiting for like the magical romance to start. And it, it, I felt like they, it wasn't even a romance at all until like, I mean, this movie's two hours long. I felt like the, it wasn't a romance at all until like the second hour. And like, for most of it, it's like a con. It's like almost like a con art. It's like a, like there's more like deception and kind of like political intrigue with like a missing princess than it is like a love story. Like there wasn't even that much of them on the scooters riding around. I wanted more scooter time. Like we were like 45 minutes in. I'm like, they haven't even gotten on a scooter yet. They're not even like into each other yet. I was, Oh my God. So that really took it out of me. And I struggled down the stretch to stay awake real bad. It was okay. Well, I had a completely different reaction to this movie. Okay. Um, I, I generally agree with you on, there was nothing that happened before she kind of, runs away or breaks out of there that I found that intriguing, but that's mm-hmm. only like 10 minutes. Yeah. It's just her. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I loved 
everything that took place with her being like half asleep and him trying to get her in a cab and then just yeah, like the dialogue between them i thought that was hilarious and so that like think, that did not work for me at all clearly because <laughs> i was just like at a certain point like i was just like just wake her up like i like the like the next morning because like it goes on there's shenanigans and it's like okay yes she's and and then like but then like the next morning she's like still drowsy and I'm, i just wanted to be like just wake the woman up <laughs> like don't like stop like nudging and trying to be like like be like you need to wake up now <laughs> like i don't know i just oh that did not work for me at all i didn't think that was funny <laughs> I also think that so I recently watched It Happened One Night from 1934, I want to say. Okay, yeah. I don't know if Roman Holiday is an actual like sort of intentional or direct remake mm -hmm. of It Happened One Night, but in that movie with uh I'm forgetting their names right now, but this is not a review of It Happened Clark One Gable Night. So fine. It's Court Gable and I can't remember the other woman's name, something yeah. Colbert, I think. Okay. Um, she is the daughter of a very wealthy businessman. So she's kind of like tabloid fodder mm -hmm. and she runs away from her dad trying to make it to New York to marry this guy, but she's trying to do it like incognito and she doesn't really know how to get along in the regular world. And she runs into Clark Gable, who's a newspaper man who's down on his luck. And then suddenly he notices who she is and he calls his editor and is like, Hey, I got a scoop. And <laughs> Then he helps her get to New York. That's kind of the premise of like the entire movie. And then it's like a road trip movie okay. where, you know, they're checked into hotels. They got to pretend to be married because it's the thirties. Otherwise, like they won't let them in and like those kinds of things. They kind of lose their way at certain points and trouble with um, like transportation. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of similar elements here between Roman Holiday and It Happened One Night with sort of a wealthy woman who's not really street smart mm. and a newspaper man trying to get the story on them, but then a romance blossoms. Yeah, yeah. Or in this one, not a ton. And I actually, we can get into this more in the spoiler part of it, but I really liked the way that this movie ended because it wasn't your typical Hollywood rom-com ending. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we'll talk about that more specifically when we get into the spoilers. But I don't know. I, I like the pacing of this movie. There, the whole bit when she's really drowsy, I just thought that was really funny. I like the dialogue between them. And when the when she says to like take her to the palace and the cabbie just says, that's the wrong address. Like yeah. that made me laugh really hard. Um and I think they had good chemistry. I also just really liked watching them walk around Rome. I mean, that's kind of the one of the big yeah. draws to this movie. I got that. And no, that it doesn't start until kind of it is more just sort of the second half of the movie. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I thought they had a good vibe between them, and I just had a really good time with this. All right. Yeah. I I I completely had the opposite experience i felt like they did not have very good chemistry at all and it felt like at the beginning when there was still a lot of like he knew like there's a lot of kind of deception going on on both sides i just felt like they weren't even there was a long stretch of this movie where i felt like they're not even really flirting or there's nothing romantic at all about this it, it, it's it seems like i don't know i just I, I was not picking up on their chemistry and then late and then finally when they do when there is chemistry then it's like it's tinged with this still kind of deception going on. Like it felt a little like exploitative, like that he, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was weird. I found it, I found it weird and off putting and I, I did not get into this movie at all. And I okay. wanted to so bad. I want, yeah. I, Cause I mean, I cause to, this is I waited. A very... I, I had many times, I had many chances to watch this by myself, but I waited until I could watch it with another local esteemed film critic, and she was also bored to tears. It was, I have never gotten to a point in a movie where she completely checked out, and she was just, like, on her oh. Like, we were both just, like, not feeling it, so. You have it to have was, a word with both it, of you. It was, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, why do you, I mean, you've kind of said what your issues were. I mean, why do you think this is such a, I mean, I felt like I got it. I mean, this is a very famous movie kind of mm -hmm. one of the big American movies of the fifties. Yeah. I guess, where do you think the disconnect is between you and kind of the general reception of this movie and how it's kind of one of the ones that's still, that's still talked about today from the fifties. 
Well, I, I think I think for one, it's definitely Audrey Hepburn. Like you said, yeah. this was kind of her 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 breakout role, and I can totally see that. And she, I mean, you know, you can just tell she's a star from like the moment she's on screen. So I can tell why in 1953 that was a sensation. Also, shooting on location in Rome, it makes a point to say that in the opening credits. You know, shot on location, and I think that was a lot of it too. I think. I think it is it is nice to kind of get carried away and just the scenery and the pretty people and it was nice when they were scootering around and I can see why that image kind of has lived on in pop culture. So I feel like I get it. I just for for me it just wasn't clicking. I don't I, Okay. Yeah. So well, I think we can dive right into our star ratings then unless you had anything else. No, let's go for it. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. All right. I'll go I'll go so, first. How low is it going to go? I'll go first. Um yes, if you couldn't tell by now, I was quite disappointed. I'm going to give Roman Holiday 2 stars. I think that this movie is not good, uh and it makes me sad to say that, but it's just uh even, you know, we watch a lot of movies for this podcast and it's been a while since one has felt like a struggle to finish like that one did. I I mean it I I don't know. I just it got to the point where I was just kind of, I felt like I was held captive. <laughs> but like, I just sort of over it by the time. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I couldn't get back in. Um, so, so yeah. So just a two for me. Uh, maybe it just, yeah. I don't know what, I don't know. The, the stars just weren't aligned for me to like this. And I really wanted to. So two out of I five. will say, I think there are certain types of movies, not that, old movies are a genre really although mm. they kind of get treated like one almost at this point <laughs> now they do yeah yeah um i do think if like an old movie just given how the style is different and the acting style is often different it's tough when you're not into an old movie because yeah. they're kind of just about one thing you know like the, like mm -hmm. there aren't these that many older forties and fifties movies that I've watched that have these big ensemble casts with really complicated plots. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, this is what it's about. Here's a couple pretty movie stars and yeah. generally some better dialogue than what we see today. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you're going to get. And so it's hard. I think with older movies, like if you don't like the main thing that they're offering, yeah. Like they don't have side dishes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, a good way like, to put like it. you just get a meal and here mm -hmm. it is. And if the first couple bites don't grab you, then it's just, it's not yeah, going to change. Right. You're not, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not going to get some other thing. You can't work around the entree. <laughs> yeah. It's just not like fill up on sides. Yeah. It's not like, oh, Roman holiday for the first act real slow, but that second and third act, it gets really great. Like they start changing all sorts of stuff. They got, you know, <laughs> Bing Crosby shows up like, no, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that being said, um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm giving this four stars out of five. I thought it was great. I was all about basically everything they were sending my way. Um, <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I mean, yeah, Audrey Hepburn is just a delight. I thought Gregory Peck was good. Uh, this, the location stuff is great. I like the stuff between them, and I really, really like the stuff like right when they meet when she's kind mm -hmm. of on that sleeping medication and just like struggling to stay awake mm -hmm. and kind of letting some of her more regal side like accidentally slip through and kind of give hints. And he just thinks she's sort of full of herself. I, I, I yeah. really enjoyed that. All right. Well, uh, before we get to the spoiler section, this is where we like to uh, remind our audience that uh, indeed there will be a movie club number seven next week. And what is that movie, Nate? The movie next week is going to be, a little image here, Clerks, yes. which somehow none of the three of us, including Adam and that, have ever seen Clerks. Yep, nope. I was actually really happy when, so part of the challenge with this kind of doing this movie club, like watching old movies once a week is trying to find stuff that the three of us have all not seen. Mm -hmm. 
because mm -hmm. a lot of classic ones, like usually one of the three of us is familiar with it. And we can do those, and we probably will do some of those eventually. But we've tried to start these off for the most part mm -hmm. by finding things that none of us have seen before. And I thought Clerks would be a good one, but I was positive that you and Adam had already seen Clerks. <laughs> it just felt like one of those things that you two would have already seen, and I just missed the boat on. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've even seen like Clerks 2, and I've seen Jay and Silent Bob 1 and 2. I just, that first one. Never circled back for it. <laughs> yeah. And so change it up a little bit, a sort of 90s uh, counterculture counter, kind of like Gen X comedy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll be fun to check out. So mm -hmm. hopefully Adam will be able to join us for that one. I think he's had to miss the last couple movie club episodes, but uh, mm -hmm. I think he should be back for that. I think that'll be a fun episode. But uh, spoiler discussion Roman Holiday. I don't know how long. We're going to need to talk spoilers here, yeah. but we always leave some room at the end for this, and sometimes it's longer than others. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I just think, like, the actual ending, where they don't end up together. Yeah. I really, really liked that, because I was, as you're watching the movie unfold, it's kind of like, okay, something's going to have to give on her end here that yeah. might teeter on becoming unbelievable. Yeah. For them to end up together. And I was sort of keeping an eye out for how they might do that. Mm -hmm. And then I just found it very satisfying, kind of a sigh of relief that they were just like, no, they just had this day and that's mm -hmm. going to be it. No, I agree. I was very worried they were that it was going to go the other way and that I was going to, this movie was going to plunge even lower <laughs> in my ratings. I was like, it better not. No, I did like that. Um, I liked the, the, the scene at the end when she's uh, walking like towards the camera and greeting everybody one by one. And she's like getting closer to him and the the other guy. Like, I like the way that was, I like that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, once they actually, once it actually became like a romance, it was hard for me not, you know, at least I was like, okay, like here we go, you know? And now yeah. and then I kind of got it. It just, it really, it took too long to get there for me. And with Gregory Peck, I, I felt like, you know, you mentioned like the the dialogue. Like, I feel like there was a lot of scenes. It was something. I feel like there was a lack of a score. <laughs> Sometimes it was like quiet. Sure. Like there were a lot of scenes where he's kind of talking to his friend or the guy who works or lives with him or, or lives at his building or whatever. And like, and it would just be like no, no, no. It just kind of like the score goes away, and then they're just kind of talking and they're just kind of explaining, kind of talking to each other. And it's kind of. And I was just like, oh my god. Like, um, but I felt like he was just kind of wooden in this one, and I I feel like Gregory Peck by nature kind of has a very unique delivery and style and and it is kind of more wooden and old school leading man but in this one in particular i just felt like i don't know i didn't i wasn't buying into his character okay yeah, I, I this know. is the first thing i've ever seen gregory peck in oh okay you you never I, seen to kill a mockingbird i haven't Oh, okay. That might be an interesting movie club movie at some point. I mean, point. he works really well in that role. <laughs> I mean, I've heard like, nothing but great things about the movie and the book. I just yeah. keep not watching the movie because I keep thinking I should read the book. And I just, <laughs> at this point, I'm just going to watch the movie, I think. It's, I, it's an eternal cycle that will never end. Yeah. I have that with a lot of things. Like, that's the same reason why I haven't watched Misery or, like, The Grapes of Wrath. Mm, yeah. But at some point, I feel like I'm just going to, for some of these, I'm just going to You're just bite gonna the bullet to. and watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, so I had heard some things about like the famous scene where he puts his hand in the cave or in the mouth or like whatever. Oh, yeah. That's something that, I, and then, you know, the classic image of them on the scooter and just a lot mm -hmm. of big image, like great shots of Rome. I think all that stuff worked a lot. I did wonder too, like when they're in his apartment, it definitely made me think of Aladdin. Oh yeah. The way it, Yeah. <laughs> You know, where he's just got this little tiny place, but it's got this amazing view. Yeah, amazing view of the city, that can, windows that can open up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I feel like movies like this, like this and like Aladdin kind of lead you to believe as a kid that apartments like that are like way cheaper than they really are. Yeah, like, oh, if you, you know, like almost like because you're way up there. And in like the corner, you're like far like, away. Yeah, you're far away, so you'll get a cheap deal. When it's like, no, <laughs> a view it's like, like no, that like, is gonna. Same thing with like uh, like Ratatouille does that as well. Mm -hmm. Where his the main the 
whatever his name is, like Linguini. His mm -hmm. um his apartment is just this tiny sort of shithole. Mm -hmm. But then it's got an amazing view of Paris and the Eiffel Tower <laughs> and everything. And I, I you always think as a kid, like, oh, you just get this small place in uh -huh. this cool city. And you just mm -hmm. spend all your time, like, not in your apartment, but you get this cool – like, no, those places cost a shit ton. And no, they're not big. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those views are expensive. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What was I going to say? I, I had it, and then I lost it again. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, how – like, I also felt like, I don't know, they never nailed, like, the seriousness of her being missing from the castle. Like, I felt like it was – like it was a serious thing, but it also was not serious enough where she couldn't just be like walking through the streets and have people be like, "Hey, it's her!" Like, if I they were like, they okay. had following them, but it wasn't like a. I felt like that would be a more like everybody know. Like I don't know, I don't know. It felt it it's felt like possible. oh, we're hiding, but also we're gonna gallivant around the city. <laughs> I think I don't know that generally worked for me because I think it is believable that most people, when she's not dressed up in the way that she normally is. And she's a good new haircut. Are gonna, like, just walk past her and just be like, hey, aren't you, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's the 50s. I, like, I don't feel like it's that unbelievable to think that most people just aren't gonna recognize her. And nobody's, like, yeah. actively looking for her either. Yeah. And then, of course, they're trying to keep it quiet because mm -hmm. they don't want people to know what's go really going on. I I thought all that stuff was believable enough and it never really bothered me. And I really enjoyed the sort of hectic nature of the scene on the, the sort of pier, like with all yeah. the dancing and the, I did laugh really hard at the way they take that one of those pictures of her where Gregory Peck kind of turns. Oh yeah. And the guy snaps the shot and then he turns back really fast and mm -hmm. she can't see it. And then she kind of looks around. I, I laughed at that. I liked, and I liked the pictures coming back around at the end. That was, that I really liked too, that, they give her the pictures mm -hmm. and she's yeah. got this sort of memento for this one great day that she got to have as a regular person while she now goes back with a little more agency mm -hmm. kind of understanding that she has a little more control over this than she thought she had before. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I just like the way this movie wrapped up and I like pretty much everything between the two main characters. I just uh, really enjoyed it. All right. Well, I've already said my piece, so yep. Um, so yeah, just another reminder, next week we will be doing Clerks uh, from 1992, I believe. Ooh, I'll and look I, that up I really quick. Completely pull that randomly. Yeah, we've been um, sort of, 94, we've sort of inadvertently done, like, we did The Piano, Malcolm mm -hmm. X, and now Clerks, which were all, like, between 92 and 94, which wasn't really on purpose, but uh, no, no, it wasn't. maybe we'll try to pull out, stay out of the 90s for, like, the next mm -hmm. few weeks. I think I think we're going to I think we need to get at least one from the early 2000s. One of those movies yeah. that we all thought was good cuz we were like 13 and now we can revisit. <laughs> yeah, like, that was the yeah, we might good? <laughs> one of those soon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think you and I have the same movie in mind, so <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll be good. All right. Um okay, well, unless there's anything else, I believe it is my turn to put a wrap on the show. Take it away. All right. What the world needs is a return to sweetness and decency.